And welcome back to the Mark Few Show. Well, if you ever wonder how special this basketball program is, all you have to do is go to the game and count how many former players still come to the games. You'd be surprised at how many are sitting in those 6,000 fans. John Fritz caught up to one of them. They come from every corner of the country and across the world. Brought together by dedication to play in one of college basketball's premier atmospheres. But of all the incredible journeys to center court here at the Kennel, none may be as passionate as the 50 feet Chris Ponerola Mog has traveled from one side of the gym to the other. It's unique, it's different, and I just love Gonzaga basketball. Affectionately known to the program as PMOG, his first two seasons redefined redshirting. His attempts to make the team came up short, so he settled for the next best thing and joined the Kennel Club. I was definitely one of the Yahoo's jumping around, going crazy, and I loved it. It was. It was so much different going from the high school where every once in a while you'd have a packed gym, but still really small, tiny, tiny high school I went to. And so then going to packed kennel and just having a blast, everyone, the huge student section, and it's a great experience and I, I loved it. But I still wanted to get to the, the other side where I could have a little closer viewpoint, a little closer perspective. And eventually, he had it. His junior season, a breakthrough that led to three years of a dream come true. Building erupts. And proof the decision to come to GU made perfect sense. I really wanted to play college basketball, and Gonzaga had a great program. They've been to the NCAA tournament many years in a row, and it was still kind of local too because I was from central Washington. And so all those things, and they had the majors I was looking for, all those combined made it a great school to come to and a great program to try to walk on to. with eligibility gone, but his MBA not quite done. Get it, Charles! He's gone full circle. Hey, yo! Your stuff means we're stick with it. Hey, yo, baby! Fanatical as ever about his former team. Hey, thank you so. Hey! Hey, oh, baby! Hey, yo, Manny! He's a great friend to have, you know, and to, you know, see him here every game is just, you know, a little, a little boost. Let's go, Cal! Hey, yo, Cal! Let's go! It's funny because you know he'll he'll be around you know here and there and, and it's almost like he never left and um, so I mean it is it is nice to see you know him just still there supporting us. His is a route that crossed the court and back. For the man known as PMOG, it's a path that can't be beaten. I love that atmosphere and jumping around. I think sitting around is will eventually happen, but I'd love to just come hang out in the kennel for 10 years and just keep jumping around and having a blast. I love Zombie Nation. It gets me fired up every time I hear it. And now I get slightly tired jumping for three minutes in a row, but it's still a lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks, John. Time now for our Subway Sub of the Week, and it goes to Manny Arup, who went 5 of 6 from the field, 16 points in 32 minutes of action Saturday against Notre Dame. Way to go, Manny. Make sure to visit your local Subway restaurant today for one of the new Subway melts, like the Chipotle chicken and cheese stacked with tender, juicy chicken and fresh toasted on flatbread. Only at Subway restaurants, proud sponsors of the Gonzaga Bulldogs. And welcome back to the Mark Few Show. Time now for our Coach's Corner. Once again, we sit down with Mr. Tommy Lloyd and Mr. Ray Giacoletti. I think Dimitri, uh, to start off with, has got experience. 
Um, I think his freshman year he did a great job because he played uh, behind Pargo and learned from him. Sophomore year, kind of, it's his opportunity and probably didn't realize with extended minutes come some tough times along the way too. You know, the other thing he's going to have to do is knock down an open jump shot. You know, he's also got some people that are going to help him there. Uh, Marquise Carter is someone who had great uh, career in junior college. And, and again, uh, it takes time. You know, guys just don't come in at this level and you hand them the ball and, and they're accustomed to exactly what has made Gonzaga successful in the past. Uh, he's someone who's getting more and more comfortable each and every day. And, and he usually takes junior college guys, you know, at least uh, to Christmas to get a true feel for what's going on and get 10, belt, 10 games under his belt. Steven has been really, really good kind of being kind of this silent assassin, both offensively and defensively. I remember his freshman year, you know, Coach Few and our staff talking to him and being the best perimeter defender that year. You know, whenever he's on the court, I think people kind of mistake his quiet demeanor, you know, for maybe having a laissez-faire type of approach, but he definitely doesn't. In the past, he's had some really good players around him and has just kind of had to done a great job of playing the role. And his personality was one that allowed him to blend with those guys without ruffling feathers. You know, if his teammates needed to feel like they had a more significant role, so to speak, Steven was okay with that and, and would do whatever it took for the team to win. Well, those personalities are gone now. So now, now it's Steven's time. Now he kind of needs to take a, a step up and and uh, be one of those main options. And, and, and I think Steven's poised to do that. You know, I mean, Steven's a, a great teammate, a great competitor. Now, I, I don't think Steven having a great year alone in and of itself makes us a great team. I think there's gonna be some other pieces that have to step up and be good to great. You know, you get the bigs who you're counting on to be good, you're having Steve count on to be good. Well, there's some other pieces that need to step up there as well and be good to great for, for us to, I guess, maximize this team's potential. We've never been a team, I, let's just go back a handful of years, most recently. We haven't really lived on the three. I mean, that might be the perception. That's definitely not the reality. More importantly than the actual number of threes you make is a post shooter's to space the floor properly. So, you know, I want to be able to put the pieces out there enough that are going to make us a you know, viable option. I think more importantly than making threes is guarding the three. You know, because that's one way teams that aren't as good as you can jump up and bite you. So to, to me, that's, uh, that's the flip side of the equation is more important you know, than actually how many threes we make. All right, let's take our final time out. When we come back, we'll sit down again with Coach Few and we'll talk about the upcoming week. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Mark Few Show. Okay, Coach. Well, a lot of it's tests. The Greg this week. Heister Show, and no, I we switched it this no, week. No, we didn't. And huh. We never will. We'll lose our viewership, Coach. Come on, uh, lose Clark State. Uh, you got Baylor, but uh, you've also got finals. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they're up against it again. Yeah, they, they are. Uh, you know, first thing we got to take care of business in finals. That's yeah. very important around here. You know, and. Uh, you know, just like on the on the court, I mean, they're competing against some you know incredible students uh, that, that go to Gonzaga, and so we're gonna have to put everything aside and step it up and 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 knock these things out and finish really strong. I think this group's done a nice job academically uh, so far uh, throughout the year, and if we you know finish up strong, that's something that we take very very serious and and uh, you know take a lot of pride in. And then and then we have a you know, a game. Hopefully, we can get back on the on the right track with against Lewis and Clark uh, State, and then a quick turnaround, and then we'll go play a, a top ten, maybe top five by the time we get to them, a Baylor team, 
kind of, you know, down, not on their home court, but in their certainly, uh, yeah, neck of the woods. So uh, another huge challenge and, uh, you know, another big week. Uh, we will have a couple practices in here again that I think we can continue our kind of our core beliefs and our and, uh, obviously our defense needs to get much better. But uh, being back home, uh, I think that'll give us a chance to to that. We just it's kind of a world where we're really hard to get some time in to, uh, of any significance. Uh, Teams have been really lighting it up against you guys from behind the arc, Coach. Yeah. How do we fix that? And, and I know you guys have been working on it really hard. You've coached the guys. And no, we have been. We have been working on it very hard. We seem to, you know, have a different different lapse and a different kind of lapse here and there throughout, uh, you know, these, especially this last stretch. You know, that being said, I think we played three teams that were incredibly gifted from out there, too, that if you made any kind of mistake, they were going to pay you and they were going to, uh, you know, in, in the case of Notre Dame and Illinois, I mean, you're talking about five men that can step out and, and do that, which is not normal, you know. Notre Dame game, as, as much as, you know, we want to think about the three, I mean, the, the threes were even for the game. You know, what really killed us was them, when them getting to the line. Now, obviously, we didn't guard the three line as good as we've hoped or what we're trying to do. But, you know, the intensity was better against uh, Notre Dame and it was obviously against Washington State so that, that's a start and that's a positive start that we can kind of build from from then. Good luck coach another tough week ahead for the Zags. Have a great week we'll see you next week right here on the Mark Fusion.